All right, Peyton, what's what is the reality it? like to finally get this thing Oh, done? man, that's, um, for, you know, really for what we you know, had to go through more than anything, but it also can be a silver lining. And um, just trying to understand from a process base, like you talk about as a coach, like the convictions that you have. And then you talk about the strengths of your team. So, like, a lot of those things aren't going to change. You just got to be better at what you do. And last year we had some guys that could really shoot the basketball, didn't shoot as well. And we played more skill. Like, you know, there's some guys that um, played a lot last year that, that didn't play as much or not, you know, today didn't play at all. But they're a big part of our program. But that's all we tried to do is just try to get, you know, athleticism, some quickness, and some skill. And I think we really made some strides in that area. Obviously, Lance helped. Then the other guys, just their improvement. Even though we didn't shoot the ball well today, it, it's more of the threat of being able to shoot the ball gives us space to play. That makes any sense. I know you're not an emotional guy. We don't see a lot of it. Right. How does this hit you? Is is there somewhere yeah. inside that really like, oh, yeah. man. What really hits me is uh, we got more basketball to play. So, like, as a coach, like, you know, I think you'll enjoy it and appreciate it as time goes on. You know, it hit me when I saw Robbie Hummel when he did the radio and what it meant to him. You know, and so, like, that to me was – that was huge. That was, that was emotional for both of us. But um, I'm just appreciative of the, the players that we've had here um, that, that has put our coaching staff in a great position. And we've had great relationships through the years, and we just haven't been able to get there. And uh, for that to happen, you know, feels great. But also feels great for you know all of our former players and our fans and everybody that stuck by us. And having Coach Katie there yeah. with you, he got a piece of the net. That's pretty special. There you go. Yeah, and tied it on his hat like you're like young kids are doing now, right? So <laughs> they look pretty cool doing it. But no, it's um, such an advantage that I felt that we've had at Purdue because of him and the program and the blueprint that he had. You know, he had just a, from academics to, you know, doing what you're supposed to do and, you know, keeping things in perspective, but also competing. Like his team's always competing. I compare Rick Barnes to him, which from my eyes is the, just the ultimate compliment in terms of the toughness, the defense, you know, just everything. Um, that he was able to instill at Purdue, and you know he wasn't he wasn't picking and choosing for a while there at Purdue. You know to be as successful as he was against Coach Knight and what, and what they had going in Indiana at the time, um, it was pretty cool. And so to be, be able to see him going to the Hall of Fame, um, you know, just just a great honor for him, but also a great honor for our program. I know you're going to say it's not about you, but you know how the NCAA tournament is with coaches and legacies and things like that. Do you feel any? measure of personal validation of any kind, not that it was necessarily necessary. But. Yeah, not really. Um, you know, you, you just try to put your players in the best, you know, positions possible. And like I said, like maybe in time, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I, I really don't look at things that way. And, um, you know, I, I it, it just, it means a lot to me. But like as you just said, I'm not, I'm not that emotional of a person. And I just, I, I, I like to just move on. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to, I enjoy winning. Um, but not as much as I as I hate to lose, and the way that makes you feel. You know, the, you guys have no idea the way it makes you feel when you lose a game, and the guilt and the just the burden that you carry because you feel like you let people down. And like here you are, 53 years old, and you like you feel the same way when like you lose a little league game, right? But it doesn't change, and I think that's also a good thing from a competitive standpoint because it keeps you going. I know don't, don't have 37 points, but Lance going through him in the second half, I thought did a really good job. Yeah. Last week. Did a better job. You know, we, uh, you know, the scramble threes got us too. Like, so, like, he has 37, but, like, you know, the ball gets loose. We got a steal. He ends up getting a three. They get an offensive rebound on a free throw kick out. They get a three. And so um, we had some breakdowns. I thought he made some tough shots, but we also had some breakdowns there where, you know, you can't get disconnected from somebody, especially when they get their head up. I mean, he's a consensus first team All American. You don't need to see him too to really clamp him, right? Um, but to say that we, we made some better plays there at the end and we were more consistent defensively, that really helped us. But he also got away from us a couple times in the last five minutes and he just missed. And uh, we, were, we were pretty fortunate. But no, we, we definitely played better in the second half just, in the first half. Sorry. You're good. Go ahead. Just to be able to play through the post even late in that game when it right. gets back. What do you credit that towards? Yeah, you know, you go down. Sometimes you can't get the ball where you want you go down the stretch and you can't get the ball where you want sometimes. Like you gotta get the ball in it's no different than a team. Like you gotta get the ball in position to score before you can score. And sometimes if people gamble and you can get in transition or you get an offensive rebound, it's advantageous. But when you're going straight up five for five, you know, five on five and there's no angles, you always got a place to go with it. 
And so, like, you're just keep, you just keep making them make decisions. Even on a couple of those where he didn't finish and you didn't get that, you just keep making them. Like I said earlier, like, you know, kind of the element of spacing comes from your skill level. And if they overdo it, like, you've got to have the confidence to step up there and, um, you know, Fletch hit a three earlier on and then, you know, Lance hit the three. And then they're so, you know, they're huge because those are the only two threes we hit in the second half. We only made three for the game. Um, but they know that those guys can make them. And so they don't want – you don't want the combination of Zach Eady and 12 to 13 threes. You know, you don't want that combination. And so I thought they did a good job defending, but they were going to make him make some tough post moves. And obviously he made enough. But, you know, he was in position to have, you know, more than the night that he had. You know, if he makes his free throws, it, it, it's, I mean, the game's going to evolve a little bit differently. How sure. much can you with this group? I know not oh, yeah. every group is, is you know, right. great and fun to work with, but right. this is a special group to yeah. do, isn't it? Yeah, great guys. And that's what I, I talked about in the room. Just, uh, you know, I want to have fun too. You know, sometimes you just look from talent, talent, talent. And, you know, I, I look at the production piece and I, I look at, you know, who do you want to get stuck in an airport with, right? And, uh, you know, it's not all about winning at all costs. You know, it's about getting guys that fit a system. you got to have your horses. You know, you got to have a Carson Edwards or a Caleb Swan again, you know, on down the line, right? And if you don't have those guys, you can't, you know, you, you just can't have all role guys. And so I think we just have a really good blend of guys, but good guys that want to be at Purdue. And, you know, the landscape's changing right in front of our eyes. And, like, what's, what's in front of us and how are things going to go? And I think we got ourselves in a pretty good position to give us an advantage over everybody else. Just for Zach to do this on a day that, you know, got the program over the proverbial hump, what does that add to his legacy at Purdue? Well, I, think I know he's got basketball after yeah, play. Yeah, when, when you're trying to separate yourself, you know, you're really getting into trivial things um, that really don't matter right now, but they do matter if, you know, you follow somebody and you follow sports. And um, what separates greatness is winning, ultimately. Like, you know, the people that win more, the people that have more success, and you look back because they're all great and they all deserve the honor of being one of the best players ever at Purdue, and he's obviously in that conversation. Did he hug you before you could even get to Rick Barnes? Yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> and Coach Barnes was very gracious and, 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 uh, and waited, so that was that was pretty cool. That, that was pretty cool on, on, on Zach's part. But you can see, you know, that his head's on straight. You know, he's about winning. How do you use that emotion Friday now instead of you know kind of getting caught up. Yeah, I mean, you know you want to be caught up in it right now, right? For a couple of days, like it's okay to be caught up in it, but just keep your focus and understand uh, the practicality of everything. And then like you know we got to go back from a process based and, and go to work and you know find out who we're playing here and and um, just start preparing just like you do the whole season. You know you do it for four or five months and um, you know now you're playing Duke or you're playing NC State. And, um, you know, get ready to play them. We, we played them both two years ago. So, um, obviously, they've done a great job, or they wouldn't be in the Elite Eight. A lot of these guys have said they really want to do this for you, specifically. What does that mean to you as a coach when your guys well, that's, that's, say that? Well, that's cool. You know, it, obviously, you you try to sacrifice a lot for your players, and, and they try to sacrifice a lot for our coaching staff. So, it, it's good that they, uh, you know, they look at it that way. And no different than, you know, when, when I played, like you want to do something for your high school coach, you want to do something for your college coach because you see how much it means to him. Thank you.